Coming up on Inside Walford Football, the Terriers hit the road for the third time in four weeks as they travel to Chattanooga to face the box for their SoCon opener. Inside Wofford Football, presented by Wild Wing Cafe, Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine, Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the AT&T Real Yellow Pages, and by Papa John's. The Terriers are unable to establish the line of scrimmage, and to make matters even worse, they turn the football over three times on offense, and don't force any turnovers on defense, and it all adds up to a disappointing loss to the box, 38-9. to Hello, and welcome to Inside Wofford Football, everyone. In recent history, the Terriers have had a lot of success against the Mox, but Chattanooga wasted no time letting Wofford know that history means nothing when it comes to the here and now in the Southern Conference. Mox got the scoring started midway through the first quarter with a three-yard touchdown pass from B.J. Coleman, but the Terriers came right back to tie the game at seven early in the second quarter as Mitch Allen hooked up with Justice Joslin for a 35-yard touchdown, but with about a minute to play in the half, the Mox scored again as Blue Cooper called in his second touchdown of the half. Then following a late Mitch Allen interception, the Mox had a field goal at the end of the half to take a 17-7 lead into the locker room, and it didn't get much better for the Terriers in the second half. B.J. Coleman, two more TD passes. While the Terriers did get a safety in the fourth quarter, it was not nearly enough as the Mox handed the Terriers their first conference loss of the season, 38-9. When we come back on Inside Walford Football, we'll take a look at the first half highlights as the Terriers turn to the air for their first score of the night. Stay with us, everyone. News Channel 7, Hardy's Spartanburg Regional and Food Line, caring for the Carolinas. At nearly 90 years of age, most people are ready to slow down. Fanny Ruth Hyatt is not one of those people. Fanny is always looking to help a person in need. A selfless community cornerstone with an overwhelming love for the people. If you know a worthy recipient of our award, send us a letter to 250 International Drive, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29303, or email us at wspa.com. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. Well, welcome back to Inside Wofford Football. Just like they've done several times this season, the Terriers go toe-to-toe -to -toe with their opponent early on, but a couple of costly mistakes late in the first half cost the Terriers some points on the scoreboard. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Henson on the call. Two receivers right, one left. Coleman out of the gun. Takes the snap. Flat pass. Far side. Pitchford hemmed in short of the stick, and he'll be tackled at the 40-yard line. It's fourth down. Allen running the option near corner. Pitch away to Rucker. Has room at the sideline. 25-30. 35-40. Rucker across the 45. Bumped out of bounds into the Mox bench. Chattanooga four down linemen. Seven in the box. Allen digs it out. Toss far corner on the option. Rucker to the 50. Wofford on fourth down this year. Five for ten and even 50%. Wing bone set. Allen runs the option near side. Short pitch to Rucker, who breaks a tackle in the backfield, but he's not going to get the first down. Coleman out of the gun. Two receivers left, one right. Back stay to block. Coleman drills it down the middle. Caught by Woods at the 40. Breaks the tackle to the Terrier 35. Terriers five on the line of scrimmage. Shotgun snap. Coleman throws to the back of the end zone. Caught by Cooper. Touchdown Chattanooga. Coleman had all day to throw the football. No pass rush whatsoever on him. 4.50 to play in the first quarter from Finley Stadium. Mock 7. Terriers nothing. Second and 12. Terriers now from the Mock 45. Wingbone. Allen throws to the far side and it is intercepted. Picked off by Buster Screen. A leaping interception in front of Justice Joslin and Chattanooga will have the ball. 
Out of the gun, Allen. Quarterback draw. He will make the first down to the 30 and stumble ahead to the 35-yard line. Wide outs either side, no tight ends. Lee's in motion near side. Fake of the dive. Pitch far corner on the option to Rucker. First down run. Two receivers left, a tight end to the right. And it's a handoff up the middle, and Michael Scott has good yards to the 50. Cuts back left to the 45 of the Chattanooga 44. Wing right, two receivers, short split to the left. Again, Scott will take it right up the gut and slant left to the 40. Second down and six from the 40. Lee's in motion right behind the formation. Again, Scott will take it right behind the center of the line. Single back, Scott flanks him. Chattanooga four down lineman on third and short. Play action. Allen going up top for Joslin. Touchdown! Well, how about that? That was uh, well executed. The safety's bit on the play action, and then Justice Joslin caught the ball in stride. Well-thrown ball by quarterback Mitch Allen. 39-yard touchdown strike from Allen to Joslin. 11.30 remaining in the first half. Wofford 7, Chattanooga 7. Coleman works under center. Terriers 5 on the line of scrimmage. Play action. Coleman under fire. He'll be sacked back at the 46. Alex Goldtree got him. Second sack of the year for Goldtree. Terriers three down linemen. They'll send four as Coleman drops to throw again under fire. And again, he'll be taken down for a three-yard loss at the 49. And welcome back, Mitch Clark. First sack of the year in his first game of the year. Three backs surrounding the quarterback. Allen in a triangle. Wide outs either side. Pitch far corner on the option. Rucker, he makes the 10, he makes the 15. Out of bounds, it will be fourth down. This has been an issue for the Terriers this year. And a high snap from Cummings. Tommy bobbles the ball, but there's absolutely no pressure, and he gets the punt away. Bradford will signal for a fair catch and make it at the mock 41-yard line. That could have been disastrous. First and 10 mocks from their 41. Coleman, flat pass far side to Pitchford, and he has met and dropped for a one-yard loss. Back at the 40-yard line, Tommy Irvin in the open field. Man in motion to the far side is Cooper. And a play action. Coleman throwing. Caught at the 7 by Pitchford. Wofford 5 on the line of scrimmage. Coleman throwing. End zone. Caught. Touchdown, Cooper. Simple slant pattern. Blue Cooper came open. The back of the end zone and... Coleman delivered the ball on the money. 101 to play in the first half, and the Mox have surged ahead. Chattanooga 14, Terriers 7. Wingbone set this time. In motion right rucker. Pitch near corner on the option. Lees has room 25-30. Out of bounds into the mock bench. Near sideline 35-36. Two receivers right, a wing right, one receiver to the left. Allen again play action. Throws it deep over the middle. Intercepted. Taken at the 45 to the 40. Far sideline, 30, 25, and down to the 22 on the pick. 39-yard try, right-footed from the left hash mark. Snap a little low, but the spot is down. Kick has the distance, good. And the Terriers on the road have a lot of thinking to do at the break. Halftime score here from Finley Stadium, the UT Chattanooga Mox, 17, and the Wofford College Terriers, 7. Coming up, we'll take a look at a guy who brings a lot of personality to the football field each time he straps on a helmet. Stay with us, everyone. Terrier fans, here's your chance to win a pair of tickets to an upcoming athletic event. Be the first caller to 597-4110. Leave your name and phone number in the message, and you could be a winner. Compliment of the South Carolina Education Lottery. Papa John wants everybody to know why our pizza's better. Better ingredients, better pizza is not a slogan. It is a way of life. So he's bringing it right to him. Papa's in the house. Introducing Papa John's new Cinepie. Our fresh dough loaded with sweet cinnamon topping. Get one free when you buy a large two-topping pizza, just $11.99. What do you think of the fresh dough Cinepie? A Cinepie free. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John. They pick up their games, pick up their teams, and pick up the pace. Enterprise salutes NCAA student-athletes for picking us all up. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. Michael Johnson is one of the Terriers' defensive leaders, and he does so primarily by his actions on the football field, but it's what he's learned off the field that has made him a more complete person. Let's take a closer look at the senior safety in our Terry in the Spotlight presented by
by Papa John's. A year ago, Michael Johnson earned second team all Southern Conference honors as a cornerback. Entering his senior season, the coaches asked Johnson to move to safety. While he was a little concerned about making the move, he did what was best for the team. I was a little concerned at first. I was all conference corner, and I wanted to, you know, to, to perhaps be an All-American this year. But again, as, as a safety, you know, I, I get the opportunity to make more plays, and I think that's, you know, what, how the coaches felt. While he's still learning to speak up and be a vocal leader on this defense, he has no problem expressing himself on the field, especially after making a big play. When I make a play, I, I like to let it be known because I'm, I'm one of those guys, again, in the past, has not really said too much, but now, you know, out there on the field, Energy, excitement, aggression, it, it all comes out. Adrenaline's rushing, and uh, I just I let it be known I, I'm, I'm here. I'm out here. Considering four years ago at this time, he knew very little about Wofford. He now credits the small Spartanburg school for helping him to become a much more caring and compassionate person. I am who I am today because of Wofford. I had this, this kind of attitude about myself that I didn't really care too much about anything and anyone, but, uh, you know, over the course of three to four years, I've... You know, that's, that's going out my life now, and I actually have a heart for people and, and a heart for this school and this college. And then there's the hair. Recognizable from the back row of the bleachers, and even more so when you get up close and personal, he says his mother asked him to grow it out, and he talked Coach Ayers into letting him keep it out. When I came in my freshman year, uh, Coach Ayers actually didn't enjoy the idea of, of hair. I sat down and talked with him, and I said, we're all individuals that make up this team. And because the Terrier defense has this individual, on its side, it is much better for it. Hi, I'm Lainey Hass, and I'm a junior from Aiken, South Carolina, and you're watching Inside Wofford Football. Go Terriers! Coming up, we'll take a look at the second half highlights as the Terriers try to gain some momentum after a tough first half. Stay with us, everyone. Health Matters TV is brought to you by Spartanburg Regional. Spartanburg Regional now offers an online program that allows patients direct access to their physician. By logging on to MyRegionalHealth.com, they can request prescription refills, maintain medical records, and leave messages. Dr. Brandy Harden explains. It's great for anybody who needs to keep track of all their medical problems that are ongoing, that are resolved, um, keep an update of what medicines they're taking. A private and secure site, MyRegionalHealth.com provides convenience for those on the go. So they can pull their BlackBerry out, they can get online, they can send an email to their physician, get a response back. For more information or physician referral, call 864-560-7999 or visit MyRegionalHealth.com. For Health Matters TV, I'm Allison Hatcher. Health Matters TV was brought to you by Spartanburg Regional. Welcome back to Inside Wofford Football. The Terriers struggle to move the ball on offense, and they can't stop the mocks on defense, which makes for a pretty long night in Chattanooga. Let's take a look at the second half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Henson on the call. They're driving with a 10-point lead. There's a toss, and Awa sidesteps a man in the backfield, gets to the 25 to the 22. Awa the back. He'll get the handoff, wants to skirt right, and this time he is hit in the backfield by Keaton Thompson for a loss back at the 15. Coleman back to throw, plenty of time toward the end zone, caught, touchdown, Pittsburgh. You can't give a quarterback that much time. Somebody's going to eventually come open if you can't get more pass rush on the quarterback and make him get rid of the ball a little bit earlier. Eight minutes and 17 seconds to play in the third quarter. Mox 24, Wofford 7, 8 in the box. And Allen, play action, time to throw, heaves it down the middle for Joslin. Pass interference call coming up. The pass falls incomplete at the Mox 40, but Joslin was hit over the shoulder by Chris Lewis Harris, and they're gonna flag him for pass interference. Wide outs either side, fake of the dive, pitch near corner, and that'll be a first down run for Alex Dunmeyer, sweeping left. And in motion right out of the wing bone, it is Dunmeyer, turns right corner, gets the pitch to the 40, Alex Dunmeyer to the 35. Allen out of the gun, Chattanooga brings four, play action, Allen rolling left, throwing, caught, first down, Devin Reed at the 30, he falls ahead to the 28. Fourth and three from the 21, takes the snap from Johnson, fakes the dive, pitch far corner, leaves, he will not make it. 
Ball on the right half. Shotgun snap for Coleman. Handoff up the middle. Awa steps out of an ankle tackle to the 40. Near sideline 30. Awa 20-15. Chucked out of bounds at the 9. Out of the gun, he'll take the snap at the 14 with Fitzgerald flanking him. Coleman wants to throw. Fade pattern toward the end zone. Leaping try. Touchdown, Clint Woods. That was a well-thrown ball that time by Coleman. His fourth touchdown pass of the night. 14.55 to play in the football game from Finley. Chattanooga 31, Wofford 7. This time Allen out of the gun. Throws, and it's caught at the far hash at the 30. Taken ahead of the 35 to the 40. That's Justice Joslin on the reception. First and 10 from the 41, quarterback draw for Allen. Slips right and gets to the 45. Second down and six from the 47. Allen drops to throw, sack back at the 40. Coleman out of the gun, snap goes over his head into the end zone and Coleman will bat it out of the back of the end zone for a safety. That's 31 to nine, Justice Joslin. One of those back deep for Wofford along with Trey Diller awaiting the kick at the 30. And there's the punt. It's a wobbler. It'll be fielded center of the field at the 28 by Diller. Straight ahead, 30, 35, 40. He fumbles the ball, and it's picked up by a mock. Near sideline, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Chattanooga on the punt return by J.D. Dothard. Not so much for that safety, providing some momentum. Yeah. 11.57 to play in the ball game. Chattanooga, 38, Terriers, 9. This is Coleman, handoff Awa, and he is met in the backfield and dropped for a loss at the 18. Coleman, the quarterback. Terriers are going to come on an all-out blitz. Handoff Awa bounces outside to the right, but he'll be tackled back at the 13, maybe even the 14-yard line. He loses yardage. Tommy Irvin brings him to the turf. Palmer, the fullback, DeVette takes the snap, runs the option to the near side. Late pitch is Brad Nocek. Pastore will now take a knee, and that'll be your final snap of the ball game. And this one has belonged to the home team and then some. Coaches will shake hands at midfield. Your final score here from Finley Stadium, Chattanooga, Tennessee. The UT Chattanooga Mox, 38. And the Wofford College Terriers, 9. Wofford Sports Information Director Brent Williamson caught up with Coach Ayers after the game. Coach, if you could just give us your general overview of the game. Oh, uh, tough night. Tough night. Uh, way too many mistakes. Uh, poor fundamentals. Didn't tackle well. Offensively, uh, didn't give ourselves a chance. Too many mistakes. Even with that said, uh, you know, in the first half, I, I mean, we're, we're still in the game. And... Uh, we come out in the second half and we're our own worst enemy. Uh, it's either penalties or bad plays or bad execution and uh, too much pressure put on a young defense and uh, you, you end up with a score like that. We felt going in that, that uh, we had worked hard, that we had a good plan. Uh, I thought Chattanooga did a great job as far as their defensive scheme. We had some opportunities for some big plays. We had some big plays, but uh, we just couldn't uh, consistently move it and uh, get it in the end zone. That's a problem that we've got to correct. Uh, it doesn't get any easier. We uh, have Georgia Southern. We have an open date, and then um, then we start back in the conference with App State. So uh, from here on out, it, it, it's nothing but hard. Uh, we've got to grow up. We've got to grow up mentally. Uh, we've got to grow up and come together as a team and realize that uh, th there's accountability. Uh, you got to do your job. If you don't do your job, then uh, you, you're going to let a bunch of people down. And that includes me as a coach. I, I've got to make sure that I get our guys ready. And uh, believe me, it, we're, we're working at it. We've lost some good players, but uh, that's no excuse. It comes down to we've got to get the ones that are playing ready and, and get them to where they can perform. You talked about that. There were so many young guys out on the field, especially yeah. on the defensive side of the ball. Right. You did get Mitch Clark back in the game right. today, which was a positive, but with so much youth on defense especially, who do you turn to for leadership? It's a situation where anybody that, that's taken a snap the previous year, they, they got to be the leaders because we're, we're a young crew. We've got uh, a couple, well, we've got three seniors, Cody Vanderlinden, uh, Mitch Clark, and then uh, Michael Johnson. and. Uh, then we're looking at uh, young guys. Uh, 
I, I thought Keaton Thompson played hard tonight, made some plays. Uh, I, and don't get me wrong, the, the defense, they, they played hard. But you can't miss tackles in space. Yeah, you, you've got to fit the defense the, the way you're supposed to fit it. And, and you can't mess up coverages. Uh, to Chattanooga's credit, they, they had a nice plan. And, um, and any time that we fail to execute, they put points on the board. Is there one thing in specific that going into Georgia Southern that you're going to look at as a coaching staff and as a team to sort of work on the most preparing for that game? The thing that we're going to try to work on the most, number one, is going to be fundamentals, and number two, assignments. Just knowing what to do and giving yourself a chance. Uh, we, we've, uh, we've had four ball games, we're one and three. Uh, we, we played two really good teams. Uh, at the highest level, and then we played a really good team tonight. And uh, for whatever reason, we, we have not put four quarters together. We need to try and simplify where everybody's on the same page and we give ourselves a chance. Okay, Coach, thanks a lot. We'll see you next week at home for homecoming against Georgia Southern. Now let's head inside and listen to a couple of the players. It's tough to take a loss like this opening up the conference, but um, hats off to Chattanooga. Um, obviously, they wanted it more than we did, and we didn't execute very well. And we got to come out tomorrow, put this in the past, come out, get ready for Georgia Southern. Frustrating. They had a good team, but we really beat ourselves. We didn't execute. Um, we turned the ball over, uh, missed tackles, um, just the fundamentals of the game. Um, so it's frustrating to lose, lose in that kind of manner when you're beating yourself. All right, let's take a look at the final statistics. Wofford just 11 first downs in the football game compared to 21 for Chattanooga. And the Mocs actually outgained the Terriers on the ground, which is a big surprise, 170 to 151. Wofford throws for 75, Chattanooga 176. Obviously, the Mocs have a pretty significant advantage in total yards, 346 to just 226 for the Terriers. Time of possession, Chattanooga, big advantage there as well. They have the football for nearly 37 minutes, while Walford has it for just over 23. Each team commits four penalties. Big difference here. Turnovers. Walford turns the football over three times, while Chattanooga does not turn it over at all. Let's take a look at some scores from around the Southern Conference. Elon doubles up Georgia Southern 28 to 14. Appalachian State gets the best of Samford 20 to 7. Furman travels to Cullowee in the pouring rain, and the Paladins get the win over the Catamounts 33 to 14. And the Citadel puts up 46 on Presbyterian. Final score: Bulldogs 46, Blue Hose 21. Let's take a look at your updated Southern Conference standings. And we can show you that Furman sits on top with a perfect 2-0 conference record. Elon, Chattanooga, and Appalachian State are all 1-0, while Georgia Southern comes in 1-1 in conference play. The Citadel has yet to play a game in the conference. Wofford, meanwhile, is 0-1, as is Samford. And Western Carolina is 0-2 in conference play, 0-4 overall. Now let's take a look at the White's Pine Street Exxon play of the week. It comes early in the second quarter with Terriers trailing by a touchdown. Mitch Allen airs it out and Justice Joslin brings it down for a 35-yard touchdown to tie the game at seven. And Joslin's first TD grab of the season is good enough for our play of the week. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. Papa John wants everybody to know why our pizza's better. Better and greatest better pizza is not a slogan. It is a way of life. So he's bringing it right to him. Papa's in the house. Introducing Papa John's new Cinepie, our fresh dough loaded with sweet cinnamon topping. Get one free when you buy a large two-topping pizza, just $11.99. What do you think of the fresh dough Cinepie? A Cinepie free. Better pizza, Papa John's. You're watching WYCW. We're your CW for the Carolinas, Asheville, Greenville, Spartanburg, Anderson,
Welcome back to Inside Wofford Football. This is where we take an inside look at some of the happenings off the field of play. And this week, we take a closer look at just how far technology has come and how it helps the coaches in breaking down an opponent. It's absolutely amazing how far it's come over the last five years, and now it's just automatic. I mean, you, you go out there and you practice, Jan comes in, cuts it up, and come back in, and it's just like it is right now on the screen. We're breaking down the opposing team's uh, game here. You have to actually sit here and physically watch every play. So right there, it's a drop-back formation. He's dropping back into the formation. As he's dropping back, the running back is wheeling out there. Okay, so it's T wheel. He's running the T wheel up the sideline. They ran that 52 times. That's their number one pass formation. And they run that 48% of the time in, the, in passing downs. It breaks it down like that. The process of doing the breakdown, the breakdown can take on average, if you're, if you're pretty quick at it, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to break down the game. So as a wide receiver coach or a DB coach, you might watch the sideline angle a little more with your guys because it shows more of the field. It shows more what they're doing. And then the end zone angle, if you're an O-line, D-line guy, you can watch your inside the tackle box there, and it gives you a better angle exactly what your guys are doing. As you can tell, it's a lot easier to see if your guard is getting that down block there on that angle, and then trying to look at it here and see if he's getting it. It's hard to tell exactly. The time that it saves with the technology of using the computer and the video together uh, is, is a big help. That's pretty interesting stuff right there. Now let's take a look at next week's opponent, brought to you by Blue Eagle Equipment. And for the first time in three weeks and just the second time this season, the Terriers will be at home. And they will need support from their home fans as they try to knock off rival Georgia Southern for the second straight year and the sixth time in eight years. And five of the last seven matchups have been decided by a touchdown or less. So far this year, the Eagles are 2-2 two and two overall and 1-1 one and one in the SOCON, including a 14-point loss at Elon this week. Considering each team already has a conference loss, this game next Saturday is huge, as the winner is still very much in the mix, while the loser certainly faces a tough uphill climb. Let's take a look at the particulars. At Gibbs Stadium next week, kickoff set for 1.30. It is homecoming. It is a big-time matchup between big-time rivals. And we'll see you back here for more Inside Wofford Football next week. Inside Wofford Football, presented by Wild Wing Cafe, Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine, Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the AT&T Real Yellow Pages, and by Papa John's.